Hello! Welcome back dito sa ating Business and Transfer Tax Class. Ako pa rin ang inyong guro, Romualdo Fernandez Credo. At tayo ay nasa Chapter 3 na Value Added Tax on Sale of Services. So, kung kayo ay handa na, kumuha ng papel at ballpen para sa inyong mga notes. So, let's start. VAT on sale of services. So, just like sa discussion natin doon sa chapter 2, yung VAT on sale of goods, Yung sale of services ay pwede rin siya maging subject to value added tax. So basically, parehas din yung requirement. So una dito is yung if the services is in the ordinary course of trade and business. So yung term na in the ordinary course of trade or business na discuss na natin sa previous chapter. So, hindi siya considered na in the ordinary course of business kung minsan lang ginawa yung service. Ganon din yung sale of goods. Kung minsan ka lang nagbenta, hindi magkakwalify as in the ordinary course of business. Sabi nga natin noon, i-review lang natin. So, it should be repetitive. It should be repetitive. Paulit, ulit habitual. Letter B, service is rendered in the Philippines. Oo, para magkaroon ng jurisdiction ang Philippine VAT, dapat yung service ay nirender sa Philippines. Kasi, di ba, meron tayong limitation na territoriality. And letter C, na requirement para masubject to VAT ang sale of services ay yung service is not subject to any percentage taxes. So, after ng VAT, mai-enumerate doon kung ano yung mga subject ng percentage tax. So, if it is subject to percentage tax, na ibig sabihin, hindi na siya, pag na-enumerate na doon, ibig sabihin, hindi na siya masasubject to value the tax. Diba? May illustration tayo dun sa chapter 1 kung ano yung combination, combination ng business tax na possible at hindi possible yung yung percentage at saka VAT na uh, combination. Diba? It's either excise tax at saka VAT or excise tax at saka percentage tax. Hindi pwedeng magsabay yung VAT at saka percentage tax. Kasi may line sila. So, what do you mean by sale or exchange of services? It means the performance of all kinds of services in the Philippines for others for a fee. So, dapat yung services ay nirender sa others tapos dapat nag-charge ka. Sisingilin mo sila. Remuneration or consideration or ibig sabihin nun, may kapalit yung binigay mong services. Pero, hindi dapat under employer-employee relationship. Kasi yung employer at saka yung employee sa employer nagre-render yung ng service Yung employee sa employer and mayroong compensation pero hindi hindi yung considered na sale of services. Kasi exclusive, employed siya under contract. Sa so, yung services nung employee na yun, uh, uh, exclusive doon sa kung sino ang nag-employ sa kanya. Hindi, na pwede, hindi niya pwedeng i-render sa, sa iba. So, pag, in, uh, pag services kahit na may compensation 
or may remuneration kapag may contract under employ uh, or employ may contract of employment syempre hindi siya magpa-qualify as sale of services na subject to value added tax businesses that are subject to value added tax so ito yung mga pwedeng ma-subject to value added tax pag na-meet niya yung requirements so letter A hotels Hotels, inns, pension houses, and resorts, restaurants, cafes, and other eating places, security agencies, warehouses, forwarders, forwarders, at saka yung resource of properties. So, this is the statutory definition of sale of services. So, na-enumerate na. -in -na, -in -na dito sa definition ng sale of services yung mga kasama yung kino-consider na sale of service however hindi guaranteed na itong mga ito ay subject to back hat kasi depende mayroong criteria mayroong guidelines na kailangan natin i-consider which will be discussed sa next chapter para malaman natin matistinguish natin kung saan yung line, kung ano bang business tax ang mag apply sa kanya, kung percentage tax ba, or value added tax. So, basahin ko lang yung definition and then pakitandaan na lang itong mga kasama sa definition, statutory definition ng sale of services. Letter A to X yan. So, madami-dami yan. So, Pakibasa na lang mamaya. Pa-flash ko na lang sa, sa screen. Basta, tandaan nyo yan. Baka lumabas sa exam. Sale of services in the ordinary course of trade or business includes form or rendered by the following. Yan ngayon sinasabi kong susunod na A to X. Construction and service contractor. Ang number one, ang letter A. So, pakibasa na lang hanggang sa letter X. And pakitanda na din.
So again, yung X ng last let letter. Pero mm, katulad ng sinabi ko doon sa previous slide, na ito ay kinoconsider pa lang siya as part or included sa definition ng sale of service. So kinoconsider siya as sale of service, pero syempre, depende pa rin ang mag a sa kanya. But, or percentage tax. Depende kung saan siya na qualify. So, just like sa sabi doon sa A2X na ang common carrier ay engaged sa sale of services. Pero, kung ano ang mag apply sa kanya ay depende kung saan siya magpa-qualify based on sa guidelines and rules sa business tax. Katulad nito, sa common carrier. So, discuss natin. Kapag ang common carrier by land, so common carrier, so sila yung mga common carrier, sila yung nagtatransport ng ng goods or tinatawag natin cargoes at saka tao or passenger. So, ang rule kapag common carrier by land daw ay kapag transport of cargoes VAT na 12% ang mag apply Pero, kapag ang tinatransport ng common carrier ay passenger, mga tao, ang, mag, ang tax na mag apply sa kanya ay 3% na percentage tax or tinatawag din yan common carrier's tax kaya CC tax common carrier's tax so yung rule na yan ay mag apply sa common carrier by land sa lupa so ano ba yung mga common carrier by land o yung mga dumadaan sa kalsada next Dito naman tayo sa common carrier by air or sea. From one point in the Philippines to another in the Philippines. O sa within the Philippines lang muna. Ha? So yung una kanina, common carrier by land, hindi na in-specify na within or without the Philippines kasi impossible naman na makapag-travel ka by land sa other country. No? Hindi pwede, di ba? walang land na nakakonect sa other country sa atin. Kasi nga, tayo ay island. So, however, kapag by air at saka by sea na, siya pwede nang mag-transfer mag, mag ng passenger at saka cargoes sa other country. Kaya nga, mayroon na sinabi dito, kapag yung kapag sa uh, common carrier by air at saka by sea, ay within the Philippines, ito ang rule. Parehas na VAT. Transport of goods or cargoes, 12% VAT. Pag within the Philippines, transport of passenger, 12% VAT pa rin. Percentage tax on common carrier from one point in the Philippines to a point outside the Philippines. So, ito na yung from the Philippines to other country pag transport of goods or cargoes, 0% VAT. Pag transport of passenger, ganun pa rin, 0% VAT. Hindi siya 12%. So, ang 0% VAT is subject to VAT pa rin siya. Kaya nga lang, ang rate niya is ang rate niya is 0%, hindi 12%. So, na-discuss na natin yung mga rates ng VAT. So, 12%, 0%, depende sa qualification na discuss natin sa chapter 2. So, makikita nyo yung benefit ng pagiging zero rated later. O ito, ang, ben ang benefit niya kasi, yung kapag ikaw ay zero rated, ang iyong output tax, pwede po pa rin maklaim yung iyong input tax. Unlike pag hindi ka lang, unlike pag hindi ka subject ng VAT, hindi mo na rin makiklaim yung iyong input 
attack. So, marirealize nyo yan sa ating mga future discussion na may benefit or may advantage yung zero-rated compared sa hindi na lang subject to fact. So, let's illustrate yung common carrier stacks. Let's apply yung rules na diniscuss natin. Victory Transport Company is a domestic corporation in overland transportation business in Luzon. So, by land siya. In the Philippines, transporting people and cargo from southern Philippines to northern Philippines and vice versa. In a day, it had the following gross receipts. Sa passenger, 200,000 pesos. Sa cargo, 50,000 pesos. So, ang total receipts, receipts niya sa cargo at saka sa passenger is of course 250,000. So, compute the business tax. So, ano na ang rule natin ulit? Kapag ang common carrier ay by land. Kasi within Luzon, Luzon lang. So, by land yan. Overland sa yan. Transportation. So, paki-recall yung ating rules. And then, saka natin i-discuss yung sagot. I'll give you 5 seconds. Okay, correct. So, pag ang trina transfer uh, or ang trina transport is passenger, it is subject to 3% common carrier's tax, sinasabi natin, which is a percentage tax. And then, kapag cargo, it, is sub, it will be subjected to 12% value added tax. So, yung 200,000 na, na, na gross receipts from passenger times 3%, so 6,000 and common carrier's tax percentage tax and ang VAT is yung cargo 50,000 times 12% so mayroong 6,000 pesos. Nagkataon lang na parehas yung amount. Another example line shipping company a domestic corporation has inter-island vessel in the Philippines transporting passengers and cargos from one point in the Philippines to another point in the Philippines. In one trip, it had the following gross receipts. So, mayroon siyang 500,000 na gross receipts from trans, uh, for transporting passengers and for transporting cargos, mayroong 100,000 pesos. So, ang total, of course, is 600,000. Ang gross receipts niya. Compute the business tax. So, ano na ang rule natin kapag um, common carrier by land or by air pero within the Philippines lang inter in, inter island within the Philippines lang so ano na ang rule natin I'll give you 5 seconds left to recall okay correct so, wala nang difference. No? Kapag, kapag kahit na transfer of passenger or trans, transport of cargo, yan, kapag by air at saka by by air, saka by sea, by water, and within the Philippines lang, it is both subject to value Tax. So, yung from common carriers na 500,000 from transport of passenger, so times 12%, 60,000. And then yung sa cargo, 100,000 times 12%, 12,000. So, ang total na value added tax is 72,000. So, another illustration, Cebu Pacific. Overseas shipping is a domestic corporation. 
transporting passenger and cargoes from one point in the Philippines to an, to a point abroad and vice versa. In one voyage, it had the following gross receipt for passenger two million for cargoes one million and ang total nun of course three million. Compute the business tax. So la uh, recall ulit yung rule. Kapag ang common carrier ay nagtatrans nagtatransport ng passenger at saka cargo from a point in the Philippines to another point abroad. Or in layman's or in other words, or in other words, nagtatransport siya ng passenger at saka ng goods sa ibang country. So, I'll give you 5 seconds left to recall yung rule. Okay, so correct. Yung transaction is subject to VAT. However, ang rate is 0%. So, it is a 0 rate then. So, 3 million times 0% is 0. So, katulad ng sinabi ko kanina, huwag kayong magpaka. Kung bakit may zero rate Kasi magkaiba yan sa exempt or hindi na sa subject to, hindi na siya VAT, covered ng VAT. May benefit, katulad nga sa natin ko kanina, may benefit ang, mag, ang pagiging zero rate Subject ka sa VAT, pero zero ang rate mo. Ang advantage na katulad ng sinabi ko kanina is that Yung input tax mo na binayaran mo sa mga suppliers and mga contractors mo, we can, you can claim them. Diba? Pwede mo siyang ibawas dyan sa zero na output tax mo. So, yun yung benefit mo. And then, syempre, magkakaroon siya ng excess kasi nga zero yung output tax mo. Tapos yung, yung input tax ay, for example, 100. So, magkakaroon ng negative na 100. Yung negative na 100 na yun ay yung excess uh, input tax mo will be or pwedeng siyang can be credited to any internal revenue taxes. So, yun yung beauty ng pagiging zero rate. Oh, ayan. So, nauna na yung upload. Uploads. So, alam kong kayang-kaya nyo to. So, it's now time for you to apply yung mga concept na diniscuss natin muna bago natin tapusin yung the rest, yung the rest, yung mga topics pa natin under but on sale of services. So, three problems ito. Application 1, 2, 3. Paki-solve na lang and paki-upload sa designated link na pre-provide sa ating Google Classroom. Okay, so thank you very much. See you sa next, um, sa continuation ng chapter 3. It will be uploaded um, immediately after nito. So this is Romualdo F. Credo saying God bless. <laughs>